Last week we were looking at building figures. And this is the figure I was working on. Um, he looks like he's sort of down in the dumps. Well, or on the throne or something. <laughs> Uh, now we built these figures out of these Pricer uh, body parts you can buy out of Germany. And uh, we assembled the various characters, the various people, by combining together arms, legs, heads, torsos, etc. From, from these pieces. Yes. And now we need to put clothes on them. Right. <laughs> so let's look at your process. In order to play paper dolls, I used to play paper dolls, but I have a different way of folding paper that looks like material. So again, I go on the internet and print something off that looks like denim. And I did take uh, sewing classes in school, both uh, junior high and high school. So in order to do this, you have to have some knowledge on how clothing is put together, how to take a flat piece of fabric and make it into a 3D pair of pants. But really, they're just basic shapes. So I'm going to just fold that in half and cut out the area that would be for the crotch area. And it's just like so. And of course, when I open it up, it kind of has a funny look. It's like a milk jug. And uh, I'm I having trouble connecting. I'll keep trying. Do me a favor, Siri, good, and good don't. Good luck with that, Siri. <laughs> Everybody has to get in on the act. <laughs> She's having trouble connecting. Why? Yeah, I can't imagine. Yeah. So again, I'll take my paper denim. And if I want to, just make sure it's the, the same size, I can fold it. And use this one as a template to know where to make my cut and just cut out this little U shape that would be for the crotch area. And of course, if you can get in there and make a really good U shape, it should fit your figure nicely. Now we have to put them together, sort of like I've done this pair here. This was the first pair of pants. So odd as it may seem, it's emphasis on seam. <laughs> and we're going to take these and match these. And instead of using a sewing machine, I'm going to use some glue. But I match those like so. So I'm using the thick, crazy glue on this because I, you can use any kind of glue really that glues paper to paper. And just that little J shaped mark right there to glue that. And be really careful not to glue yourself to your project. I've done that so many times or my fingers to my project. And as you can see, there's your pants. Kinda glue them. Okay, so there's the legs. You can kind of see how the legs are going to go. So I'm going to come in here and trim a little bit because I can see that I kinda overshot the mark. And I can do that, and hopefully it doesn't come up if I've glued the seam right. There we go. And I would come around and do the same thing on the front side. Now what I did on the doll, rather than glue that because that was supposed to be the zipper part, I just started gluing the pants part right here. So I'm going to use something so that I don't glue my pant leg together and keep it round because this is paper. I'm using a marking pins about the right size. So I'm going to, again, put some glue. And really, any kind of glue, again, will work. It just depends on how long you want to wait for something to dry. And then carefully, emphasis on carefully, because, because the paper wants to go all over the place. And just fold that around. The Any kind of a dowel or a pen or something the right size will help Keep your project from gluing to itself, including your fingers to the project. Hold that on there till it dries. And there we have our first pant leg. Ta and repeat that on the other side. And it helps if you go up with what would be the, the cuff at the bottom. Oh, 
hopefully they fit our little guy that goes in the yeah well, the since, outie they're, house. since they're down you know they don't have to fit perfectly no no who's gonna notice yeah. right <laughs> i just, want to make him he's down in the dumps he's, yes yeah. yes down in the boondocks yeah there we go and repeat those steps again carefully folding this around Okay, come on, over here. And again, I like gluing myself to my project quite often. Why is it this reminds me of Chevy Chase? <laughs> After he got done cutting the Christmas tree down. So here's my pair of pants. There they are. And I can fit those on him. There's the, the back side of them right here. Wait. And so what I did for the, the guy in there was I just kind of, since he's part, uh, writing a letter to Congress or whatever he's doing, then I just kind of used the paper and kind of just bunched everything down so they look like they're around his feet. And that's a little bit of work with paper. There we go, Oop, I'm ripping it. She's gonna have that modern look. Just kind of fold things up under. Anyway, they'll be scrunched up down around his feet once I get them on him. Yeah. <laughs> of course he needs a shirt, a plaid shirt. And I love the strategically placed magazine. Absolutely. This is a G-rated railroad. Ooh. Which is also a great scale. So now for the shirt, I printed off some plaid material. So I'll just cut these out. And again, if you have some knowledge with uh, following a pattern for a shirt, it uh, beats the old way of doing when I was a kid. We just cut two or three holes in something and try to fit it around the doll. So I think we'll have this is probably the back part of the shirt. So again, I'm going to fold this in half and try to guess. I've already made one sleeve and a, a sleeve is a funny thing. It kind of looks like that. It has a rounded top, straight sides and a bottom. And somehow that will form into a sleeve. So you'll have to take my word for it. So again, I'm going to cut out the sleeve holes for my shirt and then just a little tiny bit for the collar part. So when I open it up, it kind of looks like a shirt, the back of a shirt. Yep. So there's that part. And of course my sleeve will fit into the sleeve hole. Now for the front part of the shirt, because he has some shape to him. He's not like the human form where he's soft, so I'm having to go around a lot of turns. I'm gonna use two pieces for the front part of the shirt. And the front part of the shirt kind of follows the back part of the shirt. In the real world, it would match. It wouldn't be bigger, but because he's kind of curved and hard plastic, I'm going to make the front part of the shirt just a little bit bigger. So I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. Get both sides the same. And again, I'm going to use the shirt when you're making a shirt. Normally you'd put your reverse sides together, but since I'm not using a real sewing machine, I won't be doing that. So I will make sure I get my sleeve hole just right. And 
and of course the front of it, I'm going to, instead of cutting out a collar, we're going to fold over just this little corner to make it look like he's got the shirt kind of unbuttoned once it's on him. So it looks like that. Then I just reverse the process for the other side. So make sure they're going opposite directions. And again, I'm going to just cut out the little J-shaped piece for the sleeve. And because he's kind of like being dressed like a paper doll, again, just fold that little part over to make it look like his shirt's unbuttoned. So when it's on him, it looks like that. Cool. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, I don't have a sewing machine small enough for this guy, so again, I'm putting right sides together. And just a little tiny bead of glue. Again, I'm using the thick, crazy glue, but any kind of paper glue will work. Just glue those together like so. Okay, looks like we're holding. And same thing with this guy on this side. Now, normally when someone makes a shirt, they completely make the shirt before they put it on the person. So it's ready to, to put on. In this case, we're going to go just that far because this whole thing has to be wrapped around our guy. Whoop. I'm already gluing myself to my project again. Get over there. So you have something that looks like that. So sometimes you just have to go back in and make some little tiny adjustments because like I say, when you're making a real shirt for somebody, you might have to do the same thing depending on their the pattern and their build. But So I take my figure and I'm going to have to try this on him like so. Sort of like we're going to glue it onto him and make sure that it fits. Then what I do is just start closing up the shirt and then I can put glue up here on the shoulder pieces. And I might have to cut out just a little bit more. This side looks pretty good. It fits him okay. That one's a little short, so I'm going to go back and trim a little bit more just to make sure that we've got enough arm depth so it fits him, especially since he is a plastic figure. So we can go back and make some little adjustments. See, now when I put it on him, his shoulder seams are going to match up pretty good. So what I would do with a figure like this is, first of all, I would start gluing this to the shoulder with some glue. And of course, once it's on him, he's going to have it on there for a long time. It's not one that could come off because these uh, figures are rigid figures. And again, just glue it on and I would glue the front and then leave the little lapels open so it looks like he's got his shirt open a little bit. Neat. Now, when I glue the sleeve on, once these are set, and I won't be gluing it to this particular figure because we want to save it for our outhouse friend here, our deep thinker. Then I would take my sleeve and just glue it on with some glue, make sure you fold around with the paper once it starts to glue. You can kind of fold that around, add wrinkles if you want to. And then later on, I would just even add a collar around. And a collar is easy to do because I just take another piece of my plaid material and just cut it into a strip, like so. And then just a little angle, so it looks like a little trapezoid. And once the shirt would be glued into place and all of the wrinkles wherever you want, then the shoulder seams, 
Then I can add the collar. I'm going to take the shirt off so that you can see what I would do to add the collar. Once the shirt is glued into place, just kind of wrap this around his neck to look like a collar. I can see I should have used a little bit bigger piece, but just so you get the idea that he'd have a collar that glue that on last. And that's what I did for our friend in the... In the outhouse. In the outhouse, our thinker. He thinks, therefore he is. So I'm just gluing his little sleeve on. You might want to, of course, this is going to be on your figure when you're doing that. Our little outhouse guy. And I just kind of hold it in place, make sure that the top of the sleeve is attached to the garment. But I've left the bottom seam open because when I have it on the, the action figure or the railroad figure or whichever figure I'm dressing, once this is dry, then I can wrap that around his arm and then put a little blob of glue, make sure it's wrapped around his arm, it looks like a sleeve. But let me kind of close that up so you can kind of see how that would be. Only he's going to be on our action figure, our railroad guy. Yep. But that beats painting plaid on something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, you can kind of see my wardrobe here. We've got pants and um, crinkled up pants, like his are gonna be all crinkled. Yep. And you have another method. Let's see what you're up to. Well, this is sort of like Billy Mays' Mighty Putty. Yes. <laughs> uh, except that this actually works. We talked about this last week, uh, this green epoxy putty, and I've been using this stuff for years. Uh, for making figures, but it's really great when it comes to putting the clothes on the figure. Now this stuff has been used forever for making uh, the small figures. We used to do these Dungeons and Dragons figures. Isn't that wild? Yeah, they're not really on the market anymore. We've been trying to get them back on the market. But all of these were originally uh, sculpted, uh, not by me, but other people. Uh, in this green putty because you can make uh, these molds directly off the green putty. You can just put the figure right in there and they're so indestructible. Sick. It just uh, works. So it We've uh, given yeah, all so of the molds, uh, uh, both uh, yeah. both us oh, and, and Kevin Mooney, yeah. who was my partner in making figures yeah. back in the, uh, like the 80s and 90s. Got a few and we turned these the over to the, the Rotens, Dave and Jared, and they were going to attempt to get them back on the market, which hasn't happened yet. 95%. Right. And we've uh, we've got to follow up on that and see just exactly what's going on. Anyway, let me show you how you can That's add clothes using here. green putty. So this is one of the figures that I've been working on. Oh my, look at him. Now he too is made out of those Pricer body parts. Oh yes. And then I've just been dressing him in bib overalls using green putty. Well that looks nice. So what I'm doing is surprisingly like what you're doing. I'm going to put just a, a little daub of, uh, this is just that cooking oil. We don't buy Pam because it's too expensive. <laughs> it's just generic cooking generic oil. Generic cooking oil. But Butter this, flavored. <laughs> this stuff will stick to everything and if you want to make sure it doesn't stick to your fingers, just put a little of that on your fingers mm -hmm. and then that way you can manipulate this stuff and really work it out into a thin, 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 did I mention thin, mm. sheet and then as long as it doesn't stick your work surface uh, and once you've got like a coating of oil on that work surface on your material here it generally speaking will still come right back up mm, and that's at, cool. at this point you can kind of cut it out into something like the shapes that you need And one of the things I like about it is it tends to just naturally turn into curved shapes, kind of like a, a flowing fabric would. As you can see that it's already sort of picking up a, hmm. a shape like that. Right. But um, you can put it directly on a figure 
and then kind of shape it. And, and I could cut this out into the exact sort of like shirt shape that, that you were doing. Right. But you can see how it, it kind it gets of... gets wrinkles and yeah, everything. Oh, cool. It wants to just... And, it, it, and using a figure that's got a musculature that, you know, it'll reveal that underlying musculature and then you can kind of manipulate it and, and like in this case if I wanted to even have a you know like a coat that's, oh, right. that's sort of up yes it's kind of wrinkled or and... wrinkled or something right oh look it's bat pink yes he he turned up after being missing for quite some time right <laughs> Sort of a long story, but we, when we were unpacking all the stuff from the garage, he turned up. Anyway, I, I bring him up because this is how I did the clothes on Batfink. Right. And the cowl and the little goofy ears and everything. And most significantly, his cape was all done using this green putty. Well, that's neat. And this exact same technique. Now, it kept wanting to slump way down. So what I did is I actually built a wood frame oh. to sort of hold it in place while the putty set up and then of course painted it all black. But look how neat that, that turned That's out. That's awesome. And it's just, you know, green putty. His, his entire outfit, his his superhero costume yes. is all made out of superhero green putty. <laughs> <laughs> so let's just take a, a little closer look on how I did that. Okay. And uh, form it, in this case, like around for the sleeve. And then if, you, if you're getting it in places you don't want, it's pretty easy to make a cut. And because this is all co coated with the oil from my fingers, it's not sticking super well to the figure. Um, but if I, when I want it to, I can take this and make sure that this has got some oil on it. Um, and kind of burnish that down in place and then that'll really stick and then once this hardens mm. and it, it's fun because this stuff goes through a whole progression of it's really soft and sticky and then it's a little bit firmer mm -hmm. and then of course it finally sets up and it's incredibly hard right but when it's in this super soft phase like it is right now boy that's cool you can just really Make any kind of wrinkle you want in there yeah and, and then if you decide, oh, that, that wrinkle isn't what I want, you should be able to just... Pull it off and peel, try again. Peel the whole thing away, yeah. flatten it back out and try again. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. That's wonderful. Wow. That neat? That's why I love this green putty. <laughs> exactly. For a lot of different things. And then uh, 15 minutes from now, this will be so much stiffer that if I want to use it for making a belt or something... Ah. I can, you know, it'll it'll form into a thicker, stiffer kind of shape. Right. As opposed to this slumpy, saggy, stretchy <laughs> kind of thing. Now, when I'm putting clothes on a figure, I like to start with the shoes. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, kind of go from the, the outside in. If there was going to be underwear, I'd start with that. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but the only thing that's going to show uh, that's below everything else is the shoes, because then the pant legs go over the shoes. And then this way you can actually wrap the pant leg around the leg and have a little cuff there and everything. And it looks very nice. It does. As long as you start with the shoes. Now I found a little trick for doing the soles on the shoes. Mm -hmm. And the soles of the shoes are critical because they also stabilize the figure. Oh, I see. And keep him from tipping over. So anyway, what I do is I start with a little swatch of green putty, thin that way out and then sort of cut out the shape of the bottom of the shoe and just stick it to the bottom of the shoe. Oh. And then I can kind of force this whole thing down into my work surface with a, a good coating of oil on the work surface. And that will both push the stuff out and form a little sole all the way around the shoe and uh, create a nice level bottom so he stands up. Right, look at that. Look how nice that works. That's awesome. And then when you look closely, it actually sort of looks like the sole of the shoe sticking out. And then I can come back and, and trim back up against the shoe 
uh, or later on after it's dry, even come in with a file. Oh, that and, makes a lot and, of sense. And clean that up and, and even carve up a little section if I want it to have like a, a heel. Oh, okay. And I've, I've done that, usually not, because usually it's a detail you can't see when the figure is standing there. Right, but we know it's there. But we know it's there. <laughs> so sometimes it's fun to just carve a little notch in there to create a heel. Right. But it's a, it's a very similar process to right. what you're doing. The downside is it's green, uh -huh, and, it has and now you've got to paint it, and you're right. not going to do plaid or No, and see, I wanted that guy in plaid that was going to be Prison the stripes yeah. or, you know, whatever Well, whatever unless you've is. got a real steady hand and can paint all your little plaid stripes no. on there, you could do that. I mean, who could do that? I mean, uh, my, some could, maybe. My one guy... Um, there he's, he is. he's the drunk from Dr Gus Riches, and that's all <laughs> hand-painted on there, but... It's very yeah. difficult to get, you're never going to get really accurate stripes like, like you can do with, with your process. Right. <laughs> Anyway, that's our process for how we dress these guys. Right. And uh, we have a lot of figures to do. Oh, we have figures. Oh, uh, man. Well, you have to have an army of, it, right. of figures. Yeah. And I've pretty much finished my lantern guy. I'm adding a few details, but uh, next week we'll be painting him. Yes. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, here comes the famous blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. <laughs> <laughs> Never boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with a collectible of some kind. See ya. We'll see ya.